Hey everybody, welcome back to the next part in my dialing in series for our Line 6 Helix. Last week after I released my episode of this series, I had a request. Uh, somebody asked me if I could do the uh, Mesa Mark IV, uh, which is our Cali 4 um, model within our Helix. And I thought oh, that was a great idea. I hadn't done that model before. I had done the Cali Texas Channel 1 and Channel 2, but I'd never done other than maybe using the Cali, one of the three models we have um, for maybe a guitar solo cover video or something. But I thought, let's, let's dial it in. I'm gonna actually, uh, I pretty much created this patch already, kind of like I started doing last time, save a little bit of time. Again, I'm going to use all three so-called channels of this amp, right? We have the rhythm one, the rhythm two, and the lead. Uh, so it's the Cali four rhythm one, Cali four rhythm two, and Cali lead. Um, within our Helix. So I wanted to use all of them and again set up, this time I'm actually doing a five snapshot uh, preset. Usually I do clean, push, overdrive, distortion. This time I kind of did a distortion plus. I had a couple of reasons for that. I had a couple of folks asking me how the Yamaha Revstar kind of handles heavier tones. And I thought, man, this amp can get pretty heavy, the lead channel. So I thought, let's use it and I'll dial in almost like a pseudo metal tone, I guess, I don't want to call it that. I don't know what anybody actually defines as metal tone anymore. But I went a little crazier sort of on that fifth snapshot over the top and we'll talk about some of the things I did. But what I'm doing also is I'm monitoring it on uh, my new power cab actually as well, power cab plus. Uh, line six sent over. So um, let's dive into this. The reason again that I kind of dialed this in already over here in HX Edit is because again, trying to kind of sort out um, getting the uh, DSP to work, kind of like what I did last time when I was using uh, Jamps were those, I combined the three. I, I can't remember now, but anyways. Uh, I put two amps up on the top path, path one, uh, the third amp down on path two uh, with one cab only this time, so that was kind of nice. I didn't have to worry about the DSP of that cab. And then everything else worked. I, I kind of modified my uh, normal um, preset that I use uh, with the split crossover down here. I also just turned this into a mono, um, uh, preset just because I'm feeding one power cab and I figured I might as well do that. So I changed the um, delay to mono. I think I just left this EQ. I'd already dialed some stuff in and realized it was still stereo, but that's just gonna be some to mono anyways with the mono compressor at the end. So what I have here is the uh, Cali 4 Rhythm 1 up here, the Cali 4 Rhythm 2 here, and then down here the Cali 4 Lead, okay? And I've created five snapshots, clean, push, OD, distortion, and distortion plus, okay, which is the one I was referring to before. So what I did um, is I used a 160 ribbon mic as I like to use the ribbon mics uh, four inches off. A little word about that again, right? A lot of my tones, I dial in a little more to the dark side of things, right, tonally. Um, just because a lot of times when we crank them up live really loud, we're not gonna get those piercing highs, right? Um, you know, if somebody doesn't like how dark they are, they could always try a different mic, one of the, uh, you know, dynamic mics maybe. And it's actually, I did something neat with this with Distortion Plus. Uh, as you notice, I have these kind of set for snapshots. But anyways, to start off with the first four snapshots, I have the 160 ribbon at four inches, which uh, worked out quite nicely. Uh, the settings on the amp, um, I used Rhythm, Cali 4 Rhythm 1 model for both uh, uh, the first two snapshots, clean and push as you can see here. I like them for that. I believe I used the Rhythm 2 for the Overdrive snapshot and then the Distortion and Distortion Plus were both with the uh, lead channel. So the clean settings um, were uh, Drive on 5.3, Bass 4.6, Mid 4.9, Treble 7.5, Presence 5.6. Channel volume was at eight. I dialed that in to be kind of optimized with the power cab. Master at 6.9, and I messed around a tiny little bit. I can't remember what the default settings were on this. I may not have touched much of the graphic EQ. That's a nice feature of the Cali 4 down here. The real amp has a five band graphic equalizer at these particular frequencies, 80 hertz, 240, 750, 2200, 6600. Um, and each amp sort of defaults to particular settings. I did play with them on some of them. I can't remember what the default settings were. This ended up being what this sounded like on the bridge pickup. <laughs> If I go to the neck pickup. Hmm. 
Middle position. And back to the uh, bridge. Okay, so I was really liking the clean sound on that. There was nothing wrong with that. Now, if we switch over to our push channel, what I did, and you'll notice, is a few changes here as we go between uh, one and snapshot one and two. Uh, the drive goes from 5.3 to 8.5. The tone stack essentially stays the same. Had to drop the channel volume down because I, I raised the drive and the master, if you noticed. And the graphic EQ stays the same. So that's what this sounds like on the bridge position. Middle position. And neck. Back to bridge. All right, it's really liking the way that was breaking up. It has a nice kind of squishiness to it almost that I, I think has a lot to do also with the fact it's a ribbon mic I'm using, right? I really like those a lot. All right, so when I switch over to Snapshot 3 now, I switch over to the uh, Cali 4 Rhythm 2 model. Okay, um, and if you notice, I did something here. I was trying to get a little bit more drive than our, our, our push sound we just listened to. So I maxed out the drive in the master up to 10. Um, kind of pulled the bass back, I believe. I can't remember what the default settings were on this. But anyways, I got bass at 1.5, mid at 4.9, treble at 6.5, presence at 6.1, channel volume was back to 5. And I believe I pulled back some of the default setting on... The 80 hertz, I think. Uh, you guys can pull it up in your Helix and sort of see what the default settings are, but I did adjust those. One other word is I do have my split crossover set at 650 hertz. And on the first four snapshots, I believe, let's just check that. Yeah, it's on all of them. Um, oh, okay, so I'm on the first three snapshots, I'm boosting two dB above 650 hertz. On snapshot four, I'm boosting three dB and on snapshot five, I'm only boosting one. And underneath those frequencies of 650 hertz, I'm on the first three snapshots, I'm pulling out one dB on snapshot four, two dB, and three dB on snapshot five. Okay, so let's go back to snapshot three that we were discussing. So with those settings, I get this for the overdrive sound I was looking for. Neck pickup. middle pickup. Um, the neck pickup with the dry switch on the Yamaha Revstar. In the middle position with that dry switch on. And uh, dry switch on the bridge position. It's
It just kind of thins it out a bit, maybe leans it a little bit more towards a single coil tonality if that's, you know, one way to look at it. Okay, so that was the overdrive uh, snapshot. Let's go to our distortion snapshot now, which we switch down to our Cali 4 lead, which has a lead gain and a lead drive parameter on it, as well as uh, the um, uh, previously mentioned graphic EQ. So what I did here is I cranked the master to 10, it just seemed nice, it gave us that sort of modeled power tube distortion. I went lead gain and lead drive both on 7.6, bass on 3.2, mids on 5.9, treble on 6.9, channel volume on 5, presence on 5. Um, I did mess around a bit, quite a bit, I think, I believe, with the graphic EQ from its default settings, really pulling a lot of the 80 hertz out, uh, minus 9.2 dB, uh, adding in a little bit of 2200 and 6600, I believe. I can't remember again the default settings, so don't quote me on that. Uh, the other thing I've done a lot of times, like I do, I add my little mastering section EQ back here and I've pulled out uh, 430 hertz with a Q of 1.1 down 2 dB. Uh, and I've added in a little bit of 4.3 kilohertz uh, Q of 1.4 and I've added 2 dB of that. I think a lot of people, uh, it's funny because I read sometimes in the forums that people say, I always go in and pull out a lot of 4K on my tones. And I think a lot of times it's probably because they're using maybe, con um, sorry, well, possibly condenser mics or dynamic mics because I'm using the ribbons a lot of time. Maybe I'll add a little bit of that in to get a little bit of bite back into the sound. But it's really going to be dependent on what we're after and, and what, uh, what microphones and cabinets we're using as well. Okay, so with those settings, um, I also added a little bit of delay, which was transistor tape, uh, 18% on the feedback and mix of 23%. And the other thing is I do have a bit of room verb on all of this, kind of the normal settings I use if I'm not going for any special effects, right? Uh, decay of four, pre-delay of four, uh, 10 milliseconds, and a mix of 30%. So this sounds like this with a bit of delay on it. Uh, middle position. So pretty nice tone overall. Um, Translating very nice to the power cab. Um, now, that, you know, that might be a type of tone where if you crank it up a little too uh, louder, maybe some of those high frequencies might get a little piercing. You could always go in here, pull our, our split crossover back by a dB. <laughs> that again, you know, I don't know. I could go between two or three on that. It's going to be fine. <laughs> ah, let's leave it at two for now. We'll save that up. Okay. So that brings us to our final snapshot, which was that sort of distortion plus. And I wanted to do something really different, just kind of way out there. 
I went to the uh, Cali 4 lead, uh, kept the master at 10, went with the lead gain and lead drive at nine. I found at 10, it was just getting a little bit too much for the distortion for my tastes. Bass was at four, mids were scooped out, kind of going maybe slightly trying to get a bit of a more of a metal tone, scooped out the mids down here as well. A lot of the 80 hertz is too, it just didn't want it to get too out of control in the low end. Uh, treble at 5.8, channel volume at five, presence at 5.3, but what I did do, so I went to the cam and I changed it to a 421 dynamic mic. When I do use dynamic mics, that tends to be the one I kind of prefer a little bit more. Uh, distance of one, okay? So the way that that sounds is this. <laughs> So that's what I dialed in. You know, probably not the type of tone I usually use, but it was fun to kind of mess around with that. I hope you guys like it. It's translating really nice through uh, my power cab. I also did uh, double check these on my studio monitors and everything was kind of working nice across both. So that's why I'll probably do these from now and hopefully get them to be able to translate to everybody's system a little bit more. And obviously, you know, I'm playing this Yamaha Revstar 620. It's gonna have a different sound than your guitar, but. What do you guys think? I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you like the tones. I'll have this up on custom tone for you guys. You can grab it whenever you like um, and try it out. Tweak it however you have to to suit your system and just your um, personal tastes, right? We all like something a little bit different, but I hope you do enjoy that. It was a fun amp. And again, I just really enjoy doing this to explore the amps myself and really kind of learn about uh, some of the new models that I don't always have a chance to try. And it's also been fun uh, playing around with the new power cab. So lots of fun. All right, anyways, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Leave me your comments, like the video, uh, subscribe and share. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Really appreciate all your support and I'll be back soon with some more content. We'll talk soon. Ciao for now.